After two weeks of curing, it was time to remove the original wooden form from the arch. In compliance with competition requirements, a 20 inch by 20 inch square was passed through the arch to show its appropriate size. Throughout construction and testing, personal protective equipment, including hard hats, safety goggles, gloves, as well as steel toe boots were utilized. To prepare for loads, a small, level platform was constructed atop the arch using plaster. <laughs> to load the arch, a long wooden plank was placed atop the loading platform and 50 pound concrete bags represented our loading increments. In order to assure even symmetrical loading, two bags were placed on either side at once. This method was alternated with single bag loads in the center of the arch span. The maximum recorded load of our arch was 1,350 pounds. Unfortunately, the bags were getting dangerously tall and heavy, so they were unloaded and a safer method of loading the arch using a forklift was designed that would ultimately destroy the structure. Easy. Uh, out, By analyzing the footage of the arch's structural failure, we can better understand it, including the fact that it was caused by asymmetric loading, as well as the fact that when it did fail, it failed on three hinges. A further analysis of this view illustrates that the arch's failure coincided with one of its abutments no longer being stable, and as a result, the thrust line of the arch was no longer supported by it. Our measurements of the arch's vertical displacement indicate that the arch is extremely stable up until moments before the crash, in which we can observe a vertical displacement of approximately 3 millimeters. 
Following the structural failure of our arch, we carefully documented its segments and cleaned up the construction site. The Spitzer team would love to thank our faculty mentor, Professor Bolhassani, as well as Walter Sedovic, Jonathan Hallsgrove, and Alan Felton. Finally, the team would like to acknowledge the generous support from the International Masonry Institute, WSA Modern Ruins, the City College of New York, Spitzer School of Architecture, and of course, the Association for Preservation Technology. Thank you.